good morning. I'm delighted to be here this morning to share this panel with uh, Carla and Maureen. Thank you very much for being here with us. I would also like to thank Josie Villon and Rodrigo and the team for their invitation. And uh, let me also thank our two guest speakers. For the next 40 minutes, we are going to talk about Accountable Care Organizations, or ACO. Why is it an important topic? Brazil is a developing country. We still have a number of problems of health fundings, in term, funding in terms of private and health care and public care. And we have to focus on initiatives that can provide better results and use resources wisely. Accountable care organizations propose a better use of resources. There is not a very wide range of services. Patients are just closely monitored. There is some navigation behind it. And there is also a changing purpose, different ways to negotiate, to pay, and also to measure health outcomes. and the perception of beneficiaries is constantly monitored. There are a number of changes. And in my opinion, we need to find people and providers that can follow along with the same purpose, which is to deliver triple aim, high quality value, improve the perception of care at a fair price without waste. But to deep dive, I would like to open with our guest, starting with Maureen Lewis. She is a PhD in economy, Johns Hopkins University and executive school, half a business school. She is an ACO of a, a CEO of Assesso Global, which focuses on health issues for the private and public sector in emerging markets, supporting the government, companies, and investors, and not-for-profit organizations in health issues. It is focused on improving quality, tax, and health performance. She's also a specialist in value-based care. Before founding Assassin Global, she spent 20 years in the World Bank, where she has taken many positions. She was head uh, of human capital in uh, Europe, Asia, and uh, key economists in Latin America and the Caribbean. She was a senior manager of the Center for Global Development. And before that, she was associate researcher of the Urban Institute, working in Latin America. She also published a number of health books, also the impact of pandemic, HIV AIDS economy, economy politics of health. And she has many uh, papers published in different topics of uh, on health. So please check her publications online. She's a member of USAGA, ABS Gene, and also the Foreign Trade Board. Welcome, Dr. Lewis. Well, consider your experience, your knowledge in using ACO. What would be absolutely needed in an ACO to really deliver triple lame and everything else we have in mind? What are the paradigms that we have to break to be able to have successful ACO? How long does it take for it all to become a reality? Thank you very much, Vilma, and thank you for the organizing committee. I'm really glad to be part of this panel. I always like to speak in Brazil. I'd rather be in person than here, but well, anyway. ACL is something new. 
something that we didn't use to have 20 years ago. It resulted from the concerns in the US to improve quality and uh, cost control. It resulted from Obamacare. So triple aim and ACO, it all emerged from the Obamacare. ACO resulted from experiment in improving the quality and really taking pension in center care. It emerged from physicians groups, which were not very good at managing. There was no uh, informatics. There was not enough information about what was going on. It started as a partnership between an HMO, for example, and physicians. And together, they created an organization which provides more care, better management, which is absolutely essential, and focusing on triple aim, especially geared to primary care and also bring innovation in primary care services. Finally, it can only be achieved if there is an integrated information-based system with uh, patient information, funding, and also with a, a specific payment model to providers. In, in Brazil, it has always been fee-for-service. In this case, we have a partnership between the clinicians providing care and the management group, which is specialized in doing it. So this group of managers, they use. And it's not only when HMO, there might be different HMOs uh, partnering with this group of clinicians. The managers brought more understanding of quality, of productivity, of measurement, management, and information technology. And finally, the payment model. So we have information technology, innovation in service provision, stronger management, in a different compensation model. We can talk more about all these pillars because they are all important, but let me start with compensation model. Everything, of course, has already uh, been tried in Brazil, but the pay for performance, for example, it's really important to bring incentives or bundle payment with another option captation for an overall budget for hospitals, but they are all correlated with information technology and also performance measures. Without that, there is no ACO. So these are the foundations to create an ACO. Without those elements, there is no effective ACO, so quality, patient monitoring, outcome monitoring, these are all essential elements. Of course, we can go in more details, but this would be the fundamentals, in my opinion. Well, thank you. We'll definitely be back because you've addressed some points which I think we should deep dive. Let me now hand it over to Carla so that she can support us. She is a technical director here at ASCII. She is a physician, graduated at Gamma Filho in Rio de Janeiro. She, is, she has her training in gynecology and obstetrician. 
She's been in the private market since 2005, working in different HMOs, medical cooperatives, and also dealing with uh, invoicing, network, uh, really organizing service provision. How is it provided? How it's compensated, etc. She's also, she also has experience in coming up with new compensation models in organizing healthcare. She's been in the market for 16 years, always focused on having a more sustainable journey. Based on what we have said and what we've heard from Dr. Lewis, which are the key elements for a successful implementation of ACO in Brazil. Of course, considering the market needs, our reality, the needs of HMOs, providers, patients, uh, and ultimately, of course, also the payers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maureen, for the opportunity to share this panel with you. Well, Vilma, I think it's important to emphasize how well our country works. We are the eighth largest population in terms of healthcare market in the world. It's a very important position. And we are the fourth largest country in terms of number of physicians. So things have to be done so that we can provide sustainable and high quality care. I believe we are the only country with a free universal health care uh, system from primary care to quaternary care. But there are 47 million lives also covered by private health care services. And this market has to be reorganized so that we can deliver better results. There is a profile of patients who are willing to demand quality. And I believe our physicians have realized that and they are working together to provide better results. To organize healthcare and to really have the ACO model implemented in Brazil, we should include exactly what Maureen has just said, providers sharing the same concept of care with appropriate measurement and favorable outcomes from beginning to end. And as we are addressing such a large population, we also have to have population management. Uh, we really have to understand who we are caring for and the different regional differences. Brazil is a very large country and as such, there are specificities, there are health situations that differ from region to region. And this is how we have to adjust our line of cares. But as you pointed out, Vilma, our technical team has to understand this change in philosophy. So appropriate uh, arrival of patients, health promotion, prevention of disease. And as such, we have, let's say, a well-known journey of care shared by patient and provider. As Maureen pointed out, it is also patient-centered care. Patients will be aware of what's going uh, to happen rather than just trying to find the best way to go. So we, we need an integrated team and all supported by technology so that everyone can be on the same page and know exactly what's happening with the patient in his or her journey. So these are the main pillars for, for us to really have a successful ACO in Brazil. There are two points that have really attracted my attention. The importance of measuring, also performance-based pay, so based on KPIs. 
So how can we adjust KPIs at primary care, secondary, tertiary care? How can we organize it? How can it be agreed with the players that are part of the ACO and using as a reference the US and Brazil? Finally, how can we deal with the difference in performance? Because there are many clinicians, many providers, we are measuring their performance and we might come across gaps, let's say opportunities for improvement. How can we deal with them considering the different providers in, a, in an ethical fashion so that we can really promote top quality care? You go first, Maureen, please. Is this within an ACO or in general? Okay, fine, because I think that this is doable to do it within an ACO, because the idea is that the group has a, an accountability amongst them, accountability, which is something that you're going to have penalties or that is linked to performance. This is part of the idea of ACO. And with all the measures that KPIs, there are many types of metrics in financing and care and also management. All of this, you have information on, I don't like this, or this is wrong, this is not like that. So we have clinical practice that is very well defined and everyone has to follow these way of protocols. Thank you. Help uh, using the term in English helps. So these are fundamental, these protocols. So ACO, you know, who's following what with what, what patient, what are the results with the patients? It's within ACO, they have great incentive to improve clinical practice and management at the same time. And there is a way of doing that, which is called shared savings. And so with a strong management, with IT, with a change in practice, and also having a defined population group. It is the management of the population. And when you have that, you know the savings you have compared to the previous year, the year before, and you know how much you're spending and the quality of the service being provided. And when the service is better, differentiated and high quality because part of this is uh, following up the patient so there are patients that are healthier so we don't use the system a lot and the time passes and this is split amongst the members of ACO and they have an incentive of ensuring so how are we going to manage that and one thing I think is fundamental, which is quite different, the number of doctors. In ACOs, there are many more nurses than doctors. They do the management, the clinical part with the patients. They follow up the patients. And all of this improves, improves the performance and also the quality for patients because they have more care that is cheaper with and the doctor and the group is gaining because time passes and patients are gaining because there are fewer problems with gaps with performance because everything is defined perfect thank you maureen carla your remarks, as Maureen puts it, if we have great 
navigators that are the nurses that create a bond with the patients and make them understand that the need is to talk with this bond first before seeking care. And I reference this treat service to a correct specialty if necessary. I create there a much appropriate care and much more satisfactory. The patient has better access. As we always uh, defend in this model, right, Maureen, primary care is very present. The entrance door, primary health care being the entrance door for this model is essential. That's where I'm going to create all my indicators, considering the portfolio that is serviced, the providers that are being part, whom I reference, the counter reference, and clinical outcomes will be much more appropriate. So I thus create an appropriate journey for this treatment. So I make the savings, as Maureen put it, a very appropriate term. It is a savings because I'm providing appropriate care in the beginning, and I can provide much better quality care at a higher cost if necessary, because I have savings for that. I can develop this activity in a much smoother way. It is important for us to understand that the model moves from the hospital-centric model. So at first, it may scare people because the hospital ceases to have the greater care. So my greatest volume is in primary care by nurses and other multidisciplinary teams that are going to provide all the support. And the doctor becomes a character, a detail, say, of this action that will happen at the same time, just as hospitalizations and procedures. With the pandemic, we've observed this change in the model. I think it's been imposed during the pandemic, and now it's starting to sort of settle down. And people, the population is understanding their need to care for themselves and not run after emergency because I have uh, previous care for that. And for this, the pandemic will help us. It will bring this uh, positive, perhaps it will be easier for us to implement this model in Brazil, where we have several other players as the national agency of health that is regulating the whole movement. And today I understand the national, national agency as an advocate of the model, obviously for the quality of the care. Perfect. Within everything we're saying, people know that an ACL, we don't have a broad uh, network of service providers. We have an organized way with a smaller number of providers that are responsible for this population. Maureen, tell us a bit about the concept of providers in and providers out. When do we need to have providers out? When, an ACO, when does an ACO hire a provider that for a given service that does not exist in the ACO? Who's in the ACO and who's out the ACO? Carla, if you want to add later, this for Brazil, how we can work on it. Thinking about this, addressing a bit the differences in the contracting of these players in the supply chain to enable an ACO to happen. Thank you. Interesting question. The ACOs are uh, closed groups with only a practice of doctors that and their majority uh, have specialization or have special and the primary care. Within ACOs, there may be uh, hospitals. Some uh, have more than one and some are quite big. The difference is huge because there are small ones that only have doctors and some uh, specialized and the smaller groups that do not, they are in, they are part of the ACO, and the ACO is hiring some experts uh, outside with all hospitals. This is quite common. 
the hospital is not part, and there is a lot of research today in the US about this, whether the hospital is in or out, because the goals are different for the medical group, well, the owners actually of the ACO in partnership with the other management group. So it is interesting that during COVID, the ACOs uh, does not have many hospitals had a contract for overflow. When there are too many patients, they had a contract with other hospitals that they can hire with a predefined price to expand the network they have. And this works very well for some of them, and others do not have these contracts. They do not have these agreements, and they faced problems because they had to send to or refer to an emergency room that was out. And then this is not part or any more part of the ACO. So this definition of ACO, this is very important. You have to think about who's in and who's out. The SEO is not just doctors or hospitals or experts that want to work together. This is good, okay? But this is not SEO because we don't have this management and this IT and there are non-predefined activities in terms of in and out. And I think this is a topic that is being very much discussed in the US, but I think in Brazil, it is fundamental because uh, you're, the Brazil is adapting new models to know what they are, you are adapting. This is one of the lines that I think is important. Thank you, Maureen. Well, Carla, well, just sharing with everyone, we have the need to have a global coverage. I cannot leave the patient without care. So within an ACO here, it is possible for me to have, to hire differentiated services. So I have a provider, a large hospital, a general hospital, where I'm going to carry out most of my procedures, but I can hire using a term of hours or a credit specialized service outside this context, outside the providers. It would be an out provider, a contractor so that I could have this kind of care. Examples for that are great transplantations, coronary, very specialized coronary services where, and even uh, emergency care when I have to have it and provide it because the portfolio is a bit more distantly relocated, but also in, always integrating information, reference against reference, access to that and combined outcomes. And this is what we would be bringing here to our model. Right, Maureen, we've been working very much within a viewpoint of full ACO, hospital being inside. I had an opportunity of visiting an ACO in the US where there were hospitals of low complexity, primary, secondary care, and low complexity hospitals. And they hired more hospitals of greater complexity. As you said, there are many evaluations of this in the US. Could you share with us a bit of these results of these evaluations, what you have what has been found when you have these different providers within the ACO, and then how can we deal with that? And for Carla, for us to work a bit on the KPIs. In Brazil, we do not have the culture of measuring the effectiveness of clinical outcomes and bringing them to an evidence to the extent that we have a different compensation according to the results. What challenges do we face to actually implement an ACO, taking that into consideration? Well, thank you. About the studies, 
when there are hospitals of high complexity in, within an ACO, they have fewer than hospitals that do not have a complexity in them because there is care or tension between incentives to the group of doctors and also for the HMOs or health insurance and those that use high complexity hospitals when they are in ACOs. So, and this provides a difficulty to improve quality and control, uh, cost control. And so it's okay with that, but still they have uh, this, this design in SEOs because it varies. Remember, in the US, just like in Brazil, they have several uh, in health insurance providers, medical groups, hospitals, and the ACOs are outlining a group amongst them to coordinate and create an ACO. We have a lot of people out and doctors in ACOs, they do things out, but most do not do that. But we have all kinds and sorts. And since the ACOs are working in various plan, in various health insurance, not only with partners, or only one or two, that's quite common. So I think that it is still a question that has to be tested, but there is a trend that shows that is better. It is better to have low complexity hospitals in ACOs. I'd like to touch something. This measurement that Oma you're talking about is not is not common in the US, not everywhere. But this change uh, in the studies that have been carried out on low quality in the US system in the year 2000, this, all of this has greatly changed. This I think has been a change for the country and for health. And it's still, there is great variation. And I believe this will continue. It is common in systems like Brazil and the US with great innovation, a lot of creativity. Carla. Exactly, this is the greatest difficulty. It's a size that we have, everybody, and it is very creative. The system is very creative, and this is good. Well, Vilma, going back to the KPIs, there are key indicators responsible to make us have an appropriate management of all the process. That's not easy. Each provider that we talk to, we have a discussion on the main indicators to follow up the care service process uh, within the structure geared to clinical practice and outcomes, as well as on the customer's or patient's satisfaction. This is very much measured so that we can follow what has actually been provided, reminding you that our final goal is to deliver best quality of service and provide the best in service for the beneficiary. Not only cost, cost becomes a consequence of everything we've been doing. So for each institution, we define key indicators for follow-up and for that, it is very important for us to have a clinical manager to follow this journey within the structure, as well as within those that are funding. I'm going to use this term, this uh, financing agent that actually to us, well, tropicalizing the term, it would be what ASK does to follow the management of the whole process, not managing, follow the management and measurement of the whole, the work done. For that, KPIs are super important within every situation and at the end of a given period that we're going to make an agreement with providers, we should actually close, we're going to have 
to see if there has been benefit, if there has been savings, or has there been greater waste? What is the point or improvement point so that we can make it happen? This savings and better service provided to patient. I think this is it. We know there is a cultural thing. We know things cannot change for overnight. We have to organize our health system in complementary health, a historic way, so that people can actually buy these services. So, so we have several modalities of operators that work in specific ways. So we have some challenges to find this network of providers that have this purpose, that have this acceptance, and we have been seeking that we are identifying, we do have, well, many people want to make a difference and understand what Maureen has shared with us, of structuring elements for an ACO so that we can do this well. And Maureen, I focused on the four points that you've brought. So restoring, innovate, restoring or reforming and innovating a care. So having the system with interoperability, which we can, the system actually makes this management easier, the view, and actually viewing the gaps. What is good and where do we have gaps that we need to work on for an improvement? Another point that you've highlighted were payment models. Yes, working with a payment for performance, pay for performance, captation, global budget for hospitals, which is another way of compensating that requires a study here too, and actually having this effective management. And here to us, it is important to talk about navigation. So the work that people do to, so that we have appropriate time with the appropriate provider, the, with the culture of our population. The culture of population is very much towards a lot of use of ER. And so we have to be very close to be able to make a difference. I thank you all. And thank you, FIS or FIS, for the invitation. And I'd like to hand over to you for your one minute final remark. Thank you very much, Vilma. This has been an excellent panel. I like this conversation very much. This cultural change is fundamental. You're totally right. And a change like this is quite difficult, but we always have innovators, pioneers, and they're going to first show that they can do something, they can gain, and everything will be better. But this change is difficult. But you have already have elements of this in Brazil. So we have groups that are part of this. And I'm not going to talk about this because there's no time. But I think this experience of some of the closed plans, uh, group medicine, some of them have elements of that that are quite important in Sao Paulo and Rio and Minas Gerais. And so I am very confident that in Brazil, you will be able to adapt this and experiment with it because this is the Brazilian way. And I think this model has great value in Brazil and throughout Latin America because this model is good for low income people and high income people. We see this in the US and also in the UK. So it is a model that has value for Brazil and for the population. So thank you very much. Carla, up to you. Thank you very much. I'm going to be very brief because I think we're are about to end. I love taking part because we've contributed greatly. Well, Maureen brings his whole experience, a whole life talking about this. And we are uh, frequent uh, encouragers of ACO in Brazil. We study a lot about the topic. We believe, as Maureen said, our population, just as many others would be very much benefited by this new model. And I'm totally available if you want to talk further 
I think people will have our emails and our contact info. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.